welcome back to how to build a no code app in Adalo. Today we're going to be talking about an overview of actions and how they're going to impact the app that you're making and how it's going to turn out. Actions are the elements that make your app interactive or the functionality that seemingly makes it work. The most common actions for your app are going to be link actions, which take a user from one screen to the next. How you know that a link action is there is these little connections that are between these screens. This just means that you can travel from this screen to the next screen, and each screen can actually be linked in several different places to various screens. For example, if we zoom in here, you can see that there is an action on this submit button to link to the home list screen. You can see that there is an action here that's not linking anywhere except for our forgot password action. And then we have this sign up text right here that has a link back to the sign up screen. So again, each screen can have several different actions. Each component can have different actions that are going to link you to different areas of the app. The next type of actions is, are going to be CRUD actions. And CRUD is an acronym that refers to creating, reading, updating, and deleting data. Reading data is just how data is displayed in your app. And so there isn't necessarily an action for that. However, creating, updating, and deleting data all have actions associated with them. So for example, let's look at this button. Here we're going to say that we want to link this to a new screen. However, let's say we added an additional action to it and we wanted to create a new listing here. That is one of our CRUD actions. You'll fill in this information with magic text or selecting from a data source, and we'll talk about that in a later video. All right, there are various different places where you can put actions. There are screen level actions, and those can be found by clicking at the highest level here, selecting the whole entire screen, and then coming over here to the actions dropdown and seeing that when a user visits this screen, maybe something is going to happen. Oftentimes, people use screen level actions to differentiate between which type of user is utilizing the app. And let's say the user is an admin, perhaps you'll take them to a different screen. And if they're a regular user, you'll take them to something else. So again, screen level actions are a possibility. Next, if you click on a group of components here, let's click on this. There is a whole entire group. It includes this image, this text, these buttons, the list. All of this stuff is inside one group. There is the possibility to add actions to this group. However, this is not super common in a big group like this. A lot more common to see something like this in a button that has been created. So this button right here, it has a rectangle, it has text, and it has an icon. And you'll put the action on that whole entire rectangle because somebody is most likely to click there. There are also component level actions. And component level actions just mean that in an individual component, there are actions that take place. So in this simple list component, we see this icon over here. And this is technically in the right section. So we're gonna go ahead and use click actions to add a link action to the details screen in order to say, when somebody clicks on an item in this list, we're gonna take them over here to our detail screen. When you're trying to create a good user experience, you place actions where you would like the user to interact. It's a poor experience to place an action on a background rectangle because it's highly likely that the user will accidentally click that rectangle without knowing that an action would happen. Again, let's visit this initial group that we were talking about for group level actions. And 
When somebody is scrolling or just clicking around here, especially on mobile, it's likely that a user is going to click this background rectangle here. And there is really no reason for an action to take place when a click happens there. So placing an action at this level um, can get really confusing. It's much more likely that a user would click here on this add button, that they would click here on this icon because it, it denotes that an action should take place. And even sometimes users will click images. And so placing your actions in the right spot can really add or detract from the experience of using your app. There are very unique actions besides screen actions or link actions that happen at the component level. I created a screen over here in our app to showcase some of the various actions that you may notice inside of a component. All of these components have been downloaded from our component marketplace and they are all free to use. Here we have our countdown component. There's lots of reasons that you may want a countdown component in your app. At this level, there are two different actions that can happen in this component. First, there's a click action. So what is going to happen when somebody clicks on this component? Click actions are normal in almost every single component. And so this one isn't new. However, this countdown finished actions means what happens once this countdown timer reaches zeros across the board? So you can specify an action to happen when the countdown completes. Maybe you want a screen to switch as soon as the countdown completes. Maybe you want to clear a form when the countdown completes. There are lots of different options with this countdown component, um, but again, that's a unique action to this particular component. Next, we have our Lottie component. If you don't know, Lottie files is a quick way to add animations inside your app. They have lots to choose from from their free library. It's a really great resource to make your app look really special. In this component, animations typically loop. However, there's definitely times where you may not want your animation to loop. And so if we turn this off, you'll notice that a new action pops up here. Once the animation finishes, so in this case ends up in this end state, what do we want to happen? Maybe you want a loading screen where an animation takes place. Once it finishes, you redirect to a new screen and that comes up like a loading screen. So you would place your link action here when the animation completes. Next, we have our audio player component, and there are lots of different actions um, and timing of actions that happen on this component. I definitely recommend checking it out. I'm only just going to cover a few here. First, you can do an action when the song ends. This is really great for maybe a meditation app. If, this, if the meditation ends, you maybe want to take them to a different screen. There also are different actions on your play and pause button. So what happens when the play button is clicked? Aside from playing the music or audio selection, maybe you want to change a property in the database. So again, lots of different places to look for actions and different actions besides click actions or screen level actions. So just something to be aware of. Another thing that can happen is you can have several actions on one component. So for example, this submit button has a create action because we're going to create information to go inside the database. And it also has a link action. When somebody finishes submitting this form, they're going to be taken back to the screen where they came from. One thing to know is that all of these actions that are in this list happen in order. So first, the data is going to be created, and then they are going to be linked back to a new screen. Link actions to a screen are always going to be at the bottom of this list. However, you could have multiple data actions happen on this screen, and those would happen in order of this list. So first, second, third, and on and on. 
There is an interesting action functionality that happens here. You'll notice that we say link back and that's technically a screen. Now we don't have a screen named back inside of our app, but this is an option for very good reason. To showcase, I'm going to go ahead and go to a different app that I've created here. And this is an app that was selected from our feature template marketplace. When I select a feature template, the database comes with records already completed. It, all, it also has everything filled out, all of the link actions and everything. So to show you what I mean by the difference between a link action specifically to a screen versus the link action where the screen is back. Inside this app, you'll notice that there is a cart feature up here. When you go ahead and click on the cart, you see first off that the cart is empty, but now when you head back, you're taken back to the all products page. If you click into a category, this apparel category, you'll see that there is the cart button again. We go ahead and click the cart button and again, our cart is empty and we hit back. We're taken to the apparel page. If we didn't have the link action as back here, since there are multiple pages where you can finally get to this cart page, if you are using the link action to specifically link to a screen, it may create a disjointed experience. Let's go ahead and change this. If we go up here and we see that in our cart page, our link is again back. But what if instead we change this to be all products? So if you remember, Originally in this app, when we clicked the cart button, we went here, we came back, we're taken to the all products page. Everything seems really great here because we started at the products page. But what happens when we go to the apparel page? Now we're at the apparel page. We go ahead and we click into the cart. And when we hit back, all of a sudden we're taken back to this main all products page with the categories. This makes a disjointed experience for our users because they actually wanted to go back and look at the rest of what was going on in the apparel section, but instead we're making them start that experience over again. So that is the difference between linking to a specific screen versus linking using the back option. So let's reset this up and we're gonna go ahead and select back. Again, when we use this back action, we are just telling Adalo, remember where this person came from because there are multiple entry points to, for example, this cart screen, and we wanna take them back to the screen where they came from instead of hard coding an exact screen that they'll return to when they click that button. There are several other um, features of actions that I want to briefly touch on in this video um, that are a little bit more advanced and um, I won't go into detail on them in this video because they all deserve a video of their own. First, there are conditional actions. Let's say we only want action to take place sometimes. We can come in here and conditional actions can be found under this advanced modal. So go ahead and show advanced and then you can click sometimes and then you can set the rules for when you want the condition to happen. Again, I will go into this at a, in a future video, but for now you just need to know that conditional actions are here and can be found under the advanced options on every single action. Next, another action that you might be interested in is the notifications action. Let's go ahead and add a notifications action here. You can trigger a notification and then fill in who is going to receive the notification when this happens. So for example, maybe we want to add a notification that anytime a new rental is created, the admin of the app 
needs to know. So we went ahead and we filtered out that the admin is true here. And then we can go ahead and put in new rental created and then yay, that's happening. <laughs> Notification actions are unique in Adalo. They happen at the PWA level and they also happen inside your native apps. You can test your notifications inside our previewer for your PWA. However, you will need to run a build of your app for the app stores in order to check your native notifications. Another thing that you can do is create an integration action through our Zapier integration. And you can say, let's add the information that's created here to a Google Sheet. So something that we have outside of Adalo. And then we'll take you to this modal interface and you can go ahead and create your zaps directly in Adalo. Lastly, another action that you have is our custom actions. You're able to create custom actions if you're on a paid plan. This account right now is not on a paid plan and so I'm not going to show you how these are set up. We have another video about custom actions that I will link directly. But what's really nice about custom actions is you're not limited to the Adalo capabilities and instead you can build these custom actions and extend the functionality of your app. All right, this is my overview of actions. If you have any questions about actions, feel free to leave them in the comments here and I will reply as soon as possible. All right, I will see you in the next video.